fear of being alone is a big one, all right? Um, and I'll just elaborate a little bit more on each one. So with the fear of being alone, you know, it's so common, even with men as well. I think that's another thing that gets overlooked, how many men do not like being by themselves, which is why it's so, it's so unfortunate and kind of crazy that there's so many women who really think men don't want relationships. And it's not true. They do. These men are not happy by themselves. But what we're magnifying is the small minority who gets more attention, who may have more reason to not be quick to get in a relationship, who have more reasons to hype up a single life. But in reality, most of these men want to have somebody. Can I ask you a, a very, like, it could be controversial question. Go ahead. All right. Do they actually want a relationship or as they get older, they want someone to take care of them? Because <laughs> there's a big difference. Uh, yes. And, and, and I'll, I'll even say some of them are wait, are, want that same care even when they're younger. <laughs> right. I mean, that's true, right? So yeah. it's like that's very different and they want a relationship versus they actually don't want to be alone. And so they have someone to take care of. Yes. Yeah, so, OK. And that's a great point. So when we use the word relationship, they're looking for someone that can pour into them. There are a lot of men who, especially they've been coddled by their mothers, mm. they're looking for a new mother, you can say. A new mother who has sex with them, essentially, mm -hmm. okay? So that is having a lot. I do still say a lot more men than women realize do want a relationship, meaning they are fully prepared to pour into a woman. Many mm. of them to their own detriment, mm. all right? Which is another problem. See, what, what's, what gets overlooked is the millions of men who... Men have been sold the belief of if you love a woman, you put her on a pedestal, you love her to death, you cherish her, you do everything. And that actually is wrong. All right. Well, let me say this. It's missing context. Mm -hmm. So what I try to tease, I have a video I did on putting a woman on a pedestal. And my argument, my approach is you should put her on a pedestal. But she has to understand there are consequences. Now, when I say consequences, I don't mean that in a bad way or an abusive way or anything. It just means that, yes, I'm going to give you the world. I'm going to treat you like a queen. I'm going to love you. I'm going to adore you. But if you do not respect, honor, and pour back into me, you don't get to stay there. Mm. And, and removing the pedestal doesn't mean, oh, I'm going to treat you poorly. No, it means I'm going to leave you. I think the, one of the biggest mistakes a man or woman can make is to let someone think that no matter what they do, you will stay. Oh, God, yeah, okay? no. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> see, what you and Tom, what you described with Tom earlier about, you know, you guys uh, agreed, whenever there's an issue, you're going to go to therapy, you're going to do all these things. You guys have an understanding that, no, we're not going to stay in a loveless marriage. Mm. We're not going to be miserable. We're going to work to make it work. We're going to work to be happy, all right? But if someone thinks, I can just do nothing, and no matter if I want to, you know, treat you any kind of way, you're going to stick with me because you love me. Guess what? It's, a, it's over. Mm -hmm. The quality of relationship is going down the drain. So I think that men have to understand that, yes, treat her. You, you want, like, you can't let someone think. You have to create an environment of why someone would want to even be here. All right? So that's the other thing. What's hitting mm -hmm. my spirit right now is this is the other issue that women are having as well. Going back to that whole letting a man chase you, Letting the man pursue you. Even the advice some women are given where uh, be with a man who loves you more than you love him. Oh, that breaks my heart. Yes. But the reverse does as well. When guys say, well, a happy wife leads to a happy life, that also breaks my heart. Yes, exactly. It has to be a two-sided affair. Yeah. We have to be pouring into each other. What a lot of men and women are overlooking is the fact that in, these, in this new world of playing these games, so again, let him chase you, let him pursue you, all these things. You're neglecting the fact that you're not in creating an environment that he would want to be in. You see? So imagine mm. if, if I am a job, if I'm, this, if I'm Google or whoever, right, and I say, rather than treat you like an amazing employee, I'm going to make you earn, earn working here. So I'm going to treat you like crap, or I'm going to make you jump through all these hoops just to be able mm. to stay and work for me <laughs> at some point. I'm going to be like, I can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. See, my obsession with working here, maybe because it's so prestigious, maybe because I thought there was to be a dream job, will fuel me for a while. But at some point, if I'm not being treated amazing, why would I want to stay? Or if I stay, why would I want to give maximum effort? Mm -hmm. 
So it's the same thing in romantic relationships. If you create an environment where he has to keep doing for you, keep doing for you, but you're not reciprocating, why would he want to stay or continue to pour into you? So you'll see this dynamic where women will say, you have these men who act perfect for the first three months and then it all goes away. And their way of explaining it is, these men are playing games, they're not serious. My explanation is, no, sometimes you weren't reciprocated. Mm -hmm. So why would he wanna continue? Mm -hmm. He was serious. It is very rare for a man who is not genuinely serious to give you 100% maximum effort for a sustained amount of time. It doesn't work that way. Users and players understand they want to get the, the, the most for the least, all right? And their goal is to find a couple things you like to reel you in, but they can't nail them all. It's very rare. There may be, there's always exceptions to the rule. There's some guys who may be master manipulators who will cover all bases. That's extremely rare. Most guys, it's like, okay, he may buy you things, but he barely t calls you and barely talks to you, all right? Or he may talk to you all the time, but when you're in his presence, he treats you like you're his slave and you got to do everything for him. He doesn't pour back into you. There's going to be something that's lacking that shows you he's not consistent across the board. So all that to say, we just have to be very mindful of in this dynamic, are we creating an environment that cultivates a healthy relationship? But, and the fear is always, well, I don't want to do too much because I'm going to get taken advantage of. Yes. Right? <laughs> but the thing is, how do you expose the person unless you give your true self? Meaning, I always say, like, you, what's the best way to see if someone's going to steal from you? To hide the money or to leave the money out and see what they do? That's so good. I've never All heard right? of that. You're so right. So it's like, what's the best way to see if they'll take advantage of you? To give of yourself. And then once they cross lines that, that show you that they're going to take advantage, mm -hmm. again, you first address it because it might just be a mistake. It might be a misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. But once it's addressed, if they correct it, problem solved. If they don't, they've exposed themselves. And would we not rather to have that exposed as quickly as possible? Yeah. You know, and I'm not saying act like his wife in the first couple of dates to expose him, but I'm saying this idea of holding so much back doesn't work in your favor, it works against you. Mm. You're only prolonging seeing what do you really have here. You, can, you can't see the connection as clear as you need to see it. You can't see their intentions as clear as you need to see it. And rather than being afraid of what they will do with it, be confident in yourself that you can handle it when that time comes. So it's almost like someone will say, well, I don't wanna um, be affectionate on the date because then he may want sex but you can tell him no. <laughs> <laughs> like, so don't be afraid that he may want it. The concern should be that if you tell him no, he doesn't respect it. Mm. And, and, and if you're still saying, well, how, you know, he might be abusive and take it further. Okay, so the precautions you can take are putting yourselves in environments that don't allow that to happen. Right. So, okay, we go to the restaurant. You can be affectionate in the restaurant. He can only go so far in the restaurant. You know, and once he shows he doesn't respect it, yes, now you know, oh, I can't deal with this guy. But you thinking I have to now be closed off and not affectionate because of how he might take it. Now he's over there thinking you're not interested in him. Mm. Dang, maybe she's not serious. Because for men, physical touch, affection, these are signals for them to see, oh, she actually likes me. So when you're withholding that, it's a problem. And we can just use all kinds of examples, but... I don't even know how we got to this no, part. I wanna, but... No, I, don't, I wanna follow up with a question though before we go <laughs> okay, off go the ahead, subject. This is so fascinating to me because this is one of these subjects that is so confusing. <laughs> so like one of the things me and my husband have spoken endlessly about is um, about having sex and like mm. the first time we had sex and I remember on our first date and he was just like, you know, I don't, oh, I don't have sex on the first date. I was like, oh, that's amazing. A guy that <laughs> admits that's fantastic. I'm really, I'm really comfortable. And then he tried it on with me. So I was like, I perceived you as a liar. And he was like, the truth was, he's like, I, I don't normally like to have sex on the first date. Like he wants to get to know someone. And he was like, but then when we went back, he was like, he was so attracted to me. He's like, his impulse was just like, oh, well, let's just. And so I was like, but you know that I perceived you as a liar. And so that became almost like a little red flag on the early days. And so part of that as well is in that moment, I just had grew, grown up being told all the time, you don't sleep with the guy on the first date because he'll never call you back. Mm -hmm. And that's always very confusing because I had that idea in that first date. And so I was like, well, I'm not going to sleep with him because, you know, like I'm, I'm really enjoying his company. I want to meet up with him again. But it is rather confusing because it's like you are 
sexually attracted to somebody and you're telling yourself you shouldn't because of the fear that he's going to show interest and then disappear. Mm -hmm. What is that about? Okay, so there's a lot of... <laughs> you got to dissect this, okay? <laughs> Stefan, <laughs> help us all. <laughs> so le let me see which way do I want to start with. So let me start with the, the fact that he told you he doesn't have sex on the first date but still tried. Yeah. I believe that women should not evaluate the man based off the pursuit or the attempt. It's how he handles the rejection, okay? Because as pointed out in your example, it's true. It happens all the time where men can go into a situation saying, I will not try to have sex with this woman. But impulse, desire, attraction takes over and they push a little bit further than they planned. And like you said, a lot of women will perceive that as you played a game mm -hmm. to try to do that. And it's like, no, it just in that moment, that's what happened. How you will differentiate the man who's playing a game or the man who's genuine is if you tell him no, does he respect it? And if you tell him I want to wait, does he is he patient with you? A man who's genuinely trying to get to know you, who's serious about you, who likes you, is at least willing to be more patient. All right. Not every man's willing to wait till marriage or whatever the case may be, but he's going to be more willing to wait with you than he would with the woman he's not serious about. Because here's what it, it, it boils down to. It's kind of so I'm going to flip it real quick. There are men who have been coming to me complaining about how women want money so much, how they're meeting women. And within the first couple of dates, she's mentioning bills she has to pay mm. or asking for cash apps. <laughs> right? Yes, this is happening. OK. And. What I explained, explained to some of these men is that the unfortunate reality is that, and I don't want anyone to internalize this personally, but their own, their, their value of you is in those things that they pursue so heavily. All right. And so if a woman really likes a man, she's very cautious about how she handles money with him mm. as far as asking for it, expecting things from him, because she doesn't want him to feel like she's only after money. All right. Mm. You become more concerned when you're really into that person. Well, the same thing happens with men in sex. When a man really likes a woman, he's more concerned about how she perceives his pursuit of it. So he's going to be more careful. He's going to be more willing to be patient. If she says, I want to wait some, a little bit, he's going to be like, cool, because the last thing he wants to do is to make you think that's all he's here for. But the guy who only wants sex is going to complain, mm -hmm. is going to pressure, is going to ghost you because you don't want to have sex. You see, he's going to show you because that's where he put his value for you. Now, he may go to the next woman and be patient with her because it's going to be contingent on the individual. Mm -hmm. And again, it doesn't mean you are not a great woman. So I don't want a woman who hears this to think, well, if he was rushing to have sex, that means I don't bring nothing to the No, no, no. Not you could be amazing. Yes. But that doesn't mean you're the right woman for him. His, he, he's not wired to see your value. He's not built to handle your value. Oh, that's a nice way of putting All it. All he can see is what he wants from you sexually. All right? So once you understand that, it's so much easier. So back to the main point, I think women should focus on it's not the pursuit. Because one quick story, and then we'll move to the other angle of this. I had another client who said she went on this amazing date. Everything was going well. I think they went out to dinner. They went out for a walk. She invites him to back to her house for coffee. All right. This is late at night. I forget. She's in a different country. So it's nighttime. They go back for coffee. They sit on the couch. They start kissing. She's willfully kissing this man. So now in kissing, he attempts to push it further for sex. She gets offended. She goes off on him, kicks him out the house, doesn't want to see him again. And then she's hitting me up saying, why are men all about sex? And I'm like, but wait a minute. All he did was attempt and he attempted it because if I'm that man, plenty of men would assume that you inviting him back to the house, you inviting him back late at night, you willfully kissing and being intimate with him could be a sign of, yes, let's go further. And what women don't understand is it's so crazy. The things that women don't realize are going on. There have been millions of men who have been told they missed out because they didn't try. Oh, Yes. All right. And not just missed out on having sex, missed out on anything proceeding with this woman. Mm. All right. I even remember me one time going out when, back like in college days, went out with a woman, took her out, didn't even try to kiss her. Again, my mentality was be super respectful, whatever. I don't want to make her uncomfortable. Only to find out later that she was like she was waiting for a kiss the whole time. 
yeah, I've been on a date like that. I'm like, what do you want? You're a freaking kiss me. It's a date. <laughs> exactly. And it's like, then afterwards, I'm like, well, he clearly doesn't even like me. So, and, and see, and this is this is a perfect. Ex uh, it ties into the, the the friend example who the guy did not pay because the last right, woman chewed him out. Right, so right. you have this man. He may have tried to kiss the last woman, and she told him, you're moving too fast. Now he's being slow, and now you're thinking he doesn't like me. And you see how confusing this gets? And that's why, to me, it's more about how people handle the aftermath, mm. how we handle the conversation afterwards, how we handle the rejection. That says more because the initial attempt could just be a misunderstanding. Mm. Now, going back to don't I have sex in the... I oh. just want to make sure that everyone that hears that, we're not obviously talking about anybody that pushes the boundaries, steps over the boundaries, abuses anybody. Yes. I want to make sure. I know that that's hopefully already assumed, but just in case yes. people get triggered. Good, very good point. So now in terms of don't have sex on the first date because he won't call you again. So I always believe that that advice is bad. Here's why. I, don't be I do believe it's best not to have sex on the first date. I believe telling a woman that the reason why not to is because he won't call you is the wrong approach. Because too many women have seen other women have sex on the first date and get the phone call later, all right? Mm. And because, listen, if the sex was great, he probably will come back. Doesn't mean he's seriously interested in you. It just means he wants to hold on to this great sex. The correct advice to me is don't have sex on the first date because you need time to evaluate what you're dealing with. Mm. And doing it so soon can blind you. Sex can easily cloud your judgment. So forget him for a second. Forget his respect. Now listen, there are men out there who will not respect you or not call you if you have sex with them too soon. There are tons of other men who don't care, all right? So you never know what you're going to get. So to me, worrying about what the man's perception is is pointless. Think about how you handled this. Can you properly evaluate this man if you have sex on the first date? Are you going to be okay if you have sex on the first date and he doesn't call you the next day? See, t for me, and this is aside from any spiritual beliefs, because again, we can talk about waiting until marriage, but I understand that most people aren't waiting yeah, that long. Yeah, assuming it's not a, a exactly. religious reason. or Yes. Yeah, thank you. So I always say, don't have sex for a woman until you are comfortable with what happens next. Mm. All right? Because some women are not having sex out of their own desire for it. They're doing it because I want him to like me. I want this to move forward. You know, I I'm just enjoying this moment so much. I don't want to mess this up. Let's just go with this flow. They're not truly comfortable. And what a lot of women don't realize is this can backfire in multiple ways. One, again, you had sex with him too soon before you realized he was not serious about you. All right? And now it doesn't proceed as anything else, and now you feel cheated and used. Mm -hmm. All right? Also, I want to be very sensitive about how I say this because somebody mentioned to me that some women might take this to heart too much. If you have sex on the first date, or any time, at any point, the sex now comes into the equation in evaluating if I want to deal with you. Mm. If you as a woman are not truly comfortable yet, your performance won't be as great as you think it will be. Now, this whole thing can be derailed by a misunderstanding sexually. Mm. So think about it like this, Even, and it happens with men too. If a man, let's say, is very anxious to have sex with this woman, and he does it before he's gathered himself properly, and now he's one minute in and it's done, <laughs> <laughs> right? So the quality is horrible. And now he's this great guy, but she's like, man, this sex is so bad, I don't want to move forward. But sex is something that you can learn to be better at. Mm -hmm. This idea, and that's the other reason why this whole sexual chemistry thing is a little, it's misguided in certain aspects. And that's why connection to me is the foundation to it all. Because as long as there's connection, we can work this out. If there's no connection, then you're right. The sex may just be you don't align with each other. But the point I'm going to make is that in moving too fast and going too soon, if we're not comfortable and confident in that experience, we may have a bad experience. And now our ability to come together Ooh. is derailed because we're holding on to the fact that the sex wasn't that great. And in today's society, a lot of people don't want to work on trying to learn each other. And again, if we don't have a connection yet, we don't have the desire to want to push past this. Mm -hmm. Now, I will say, there are tons of women who get with a man even when the sex is bad. It's one of those things that's happening a lot, all right? I've had women who were in relationships for two, three years. Man swore he was doing it big in the bedroom, and the whole time she never had an orgasm with him, nothing. It wasn't that great, but she didn't want to pass up a great guy.
and she wasn't communicating with him, so she was just kind of staying quiet about it. Exactly, this. exactly. And so that's another problem with sex very soon. Have you established the ability to communicate about things? Because if you have sex too soon, it's not that great, but you're afraid to mess this situation up. You figure, I'm not gonna make any complaints, I'm not gonna say anything. But now you have to bite your tongue for date three, date four. Now we're months into the day, years, and you've never told him the truth. And now you feel like you can't. And so now, even though you're holding on to this great guy, the sex is bad. And without great sex, we are severely hindering this relationship and the potential for success. It, it will fall apart. Bottom line is, if the sex isn't good, it's going to fall apart at some point. All right? All that because you jump too fast mm -hmm. without establishing certain foundational principles needed for long-term success. Now, if you're just trying to have a casual relationship, this is a whole different story. Right. But if you're trying to have something real, something sustainable, it is best to wait. But I just think the whole, he won't call you, that's not, that's not the way we should be looking at it. Mm. Yeah, I love the way you broke it down. And I think for me, it was in that moment, I had seen it my first day with my husband, it was going to be a summer fling. I had to go back to England. He was American. It's not like I actually thought my <laughs> life would end up the way it was or the way it has been. Um, and so to me, it was a fling. But I was like, I really want to kind of like just hang out for the next couple of weeks, have a lot of fun. I was like, well, but I was very attracted to him. And so the only reason why, if I'm going to be honest, the only reason why I didn't sleep with him on the first date is because I was worried that I wouldn't see me on the second date. It wasn't that I didn't want to. I was extremely sexually mm -hmm. attracted to him. So I made the decision based on the fear that I'd been told would happen that you're saying is actually false. Exactly. But here's the thing. I remember someone said to me one time, Plenty of men have not gotten with a woman because she had sex with him too soon. But I've never heard of a man not being with a woman who waited to have sex with him. If he's really into you, if he had to wait three months and everything's great, he's not walking away because, oh, well, she made me wait three months, so I'm gone now. If he walks away, he was never really that into you and it was never going to go anywhere, mm. all right? But basically what I'm really trying to get at is you're still safer waiting. Right. You're less likely to be penalized by waiting. You're more likely to be penalized by moving too fast. I've even seen examples of, here's the other thing that women don't consider, but again, I don't want this to be a reason why she doesn't do it, because going back to your, your experience, you see, you are worried about, he won't see me again tomorrow. Mm. I'm still okay with that, because again, that means you were not ready to have sex yet, because God forbid if he didn't see you tomorrow, then you would have been heartbroken. Yeah. All right? Yeah. I would rather you be at a point where it's like, okay, you know what? So go, rewinding back to where you thought it was going to be a fling. If you went into it saying, I just want to have some fun. I'm attracted to this guy. I just want to do it. Whatever happens, happens. Cool. Do your thing. Because now, if it doesn't progress, you don't feel like you're robbed. Mm. You, so, so basically, the woman should do it when it's about the experience itself, mm. not what surrounds the experience. Once you start attaching things to it, now you muddy up the situation. And now if this man doesn't meet whatever your expectations were, you feel cheated and used. Same thing happens with men and money. When a man spends a lot of money on a woman so fast trying to impress her and it doesn't turn into anything, he feels like, I got used. But he doesn't complain if the sex happens too fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't feel used that way. <laughs> it's so interesting, though, that we both we both sides have that thing. Yes, it's just different. Yeah. For women, it is typically sex. For men, it is typically money. And so, yeah, I think that, you know, again, with, with waiting, it's just a matter of doing what's best for you, what you can handle. Also, being honest with yourself. If you're a woman that knows you get very attached after having sex, it, you should think twice about having sex too soon. You, you would want to establish, okay, do we have a relationship here? Like, to me, that's the woman that should wait to at least a relationship is official. Because, again, do you want to become attached to a man who's never going to be with you? Mm. This is where it becomes a problem. But it's about being honest with yourself. Some women can handle it. Some women can't. It's like dating multiple men. Some women can handle dating multiple men at the same time and still navigate it with no problem, evaluate each man efficiently, she's good. Other women get overwhelmed by that. It's too much, it's a distracting, they can't fully get into it, so they shouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. So when society says, just date as many men as you want to, no, date as many men as you can handle. Mm -hmm. Have sex when you can handle it, you see? So that you know that you can be okay no matter what happens in this situation. 
Hey, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to check this one out right here and I'll see you there. A lack of boundaries invites a lack of respect. The reality is that when we are engaging with someone, specifically having a romantic relationship with an individual, we have to understand that everyone doesn't know